So this exhibition of the the new one with mm. the Great Artesian Basin, mm. that's a place none of us can go and visit. Yeah, and exactly. physically immerse mm. ourselves in. Mm. So through your art, mm. you're going to imaginatively take take us there. Yeah, well, one of the um, great challenges to me was that I can't see it. <laughs> so I'm making work about something that you can't see, apart from uh, in some places you can see uh, the springs and, you know, enjoy the springs, but otherwise it's pretty much um, all underground. Mm. Yes. So, um, and I've used maps before, so I decided you know, to use maps of the Great Artesian Basin to, uh, as the basis for, for the work. And the map of the Great Artesian Basin is amazing. It looks like this flamenco dancer. It's just beautiful. It's really vibrant. It's got so much energy. You know, the shape of it is, is a dancer. It's amazing. So um, that, that was good. That was inspiring. Um, the reason I'm interested in map making is because we only map that which we are going to be able to use or exploit, right? We don't make maps of things that uh, don't have some benefit for us, do we? It's not. the only thing we map is what we want to take. <laughs> Or what we want to go and find out about. Find out about. Yeah. So it's not all about no, true. acquisition. But usually it is. Usually it is. Sadly. Yeah, we've got maps of roads, we've got maps of rivers, we've got maps of where all the different minerals and, um, uh, you know, resources are. Um, we put satellites up, up above us to make maps of everything it's it's um it's knowledge but it's also exploitation a, a means towards exploitation so a lot of my um artworks have been mapping things that aren't like that yeah mapping different yeah so things there, that usually aren't mapped so mm. there is a shift happening Mm. There really is because there has to be. Mm. So the maps of the future will be more, I hope, like the maps that you're making, mm. that come from people who care, mm. who have witnessed, mm. have listened yeah. to the people and the land itself. Mm. And we want that to continue, surely, sure. that map making. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maps are amazing. So, who has the, this is the other question that I can hear, who has the authority to make these new maps? You obviously have. You're, you, you are. You're well, I give myself the authority. <laughs> you, well, I, I guess in the face of, like, because it's a new, anything new, you have to just do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take one, that responsibility. Yeah. One of the, the motto that I gave my students, it's getting a bit noisy, isn't it? Um, is this going to. Just. This is okay. important. And All right. So, the motto that I told my students as an artist is making art makes art. Okay? You can sit and think about making the artwork for your whole life, but it's never going to be made unless you actually make it. And the other aspect of that is, when you start making something, the initial idea just becomes richer and richer and richer as you go through the processes of making. So what you start off with ends up being really multifaceted with lots of different connections because I think that's the difference between art, art making or creativity um, that most other activities where, where you make all of these tangential connections bring them all together 
so that you make this very multifaceted um, drawing, if you like, that people bring their own drawings to and interpret them from that way. So although some of the artworks that I've made are like sledgehammers slapping people over the head and going, say, do something, like Murray River Punch is a sledgehammer artwork. But what I also love to do is make works that people can bring their own stories to, their own knowledge, their own perspectives, and, and make, weave their own narrative uh, using my artwork as a kind of catalyst. Yeah. I think that's what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Bonita. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs>